Heavenly Father, I commit uh, this service to you, this message. I pray that you would help me to preach it, Lord. I pray that you'd be my mouthpiece. I pray that um, the Holy Spirit would fill me today. And Lord, as we begin kickoff 2021, this is our first uh, Sunday morning. I ask that, Lord, you would give us a prosperous year spiritually, that you'd bless us. I pray that we'd win many to Jesus this year and we'd disciple folks and get people grounded in the word. I pray that you bless our church. I pray for those that are down and out, not feeling well, and those that need prayer, urgent prayer, or just need prayer uh, to get them through. I, I pray for them today. I pray for those that might be suffering from COVID. I pray for them. I pray that you continue to keep the church safe and uh, help us, Lord, as we head into this year. And uh, thank you, Lord. I pray for anybody that might um, be wanting to read through their Bible. I pray that uh, they could get started and, and make it a goal to finish. And Lord, I pray that you would just lead and guide your saints. And thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And I wanted to uh, just say that real quickly. Uh, if anybody would like to read their Bible through, we can get you a list, uh, a schedule. Okay, Ben is going to have, the, he'll have them on the counter for Wednesday. So if you want to start reading your Bible through for the year, the same plan, he'll have a couple, as I said, for Wednesday. So if you want to start, maybe start in Genesis and Matthew, and just, then you can catch up come Wednesday. So if the Lord would lay it on your heart to read through the Bible, I know, and I want to commend those that have read through their Bible. Praise the Lord. That's a real blessing to read every word of God. And I believe that every Christian is going to give an account for every word of God. So if you haven't had a chance to read it from Genesis all the way through the end to Revelation, in whatever format you choose, you can honestly say to God, I made it my responsibility and my duty. I accomplished that. I finished reading the Word of God from cover to cover. So that's a real blessing if the Lord would lay it on your heart to do that. There are many other things you can do for the Lord this year. Prayer, um, I have seen, and I said this in my last sermon that I preached, the one thing the Lord has done is he's increased the prayer life of the saints. Um, in fact, many of you have told me you find yourself praying a lot more, and it's probably due to COVID. It's due to the pandemic. You find yourself praying not just for yourself, but also for other people. And the Lord is hearing a lot of voices, and some have been strange to him. But he's hearing some, oh, that voice I haven't heard in a while. You know, sometimes the Lord has to bring things into our life in order for us to pray. But witnessing, too. There are people, don't let the fruit die on the vine. Get out there, witness, and try to win, Christ, win people to Christ. And praise the Lord, through the street preaching ministry yesterday, we had our first soul for the year uh, get saved. A young man by the name of Jason accepted Christ as his Savior yesterday. So praise the Lord. Witnessing, prayer, Bible reading, encouraging the saints, uh, various things, little ministries, Sunday school, um, passing out gospel tracts, cleaning the church. Those are little things that we can, uh, as we head into 2021. So I wanted to just throw that all out there. I know that's really not part of my ser sermon today. My sermon is actually on revival, on revival. So let's turn to a backup, a backup, and we'll give you about 15 minutes to find that book. <laughs> yeah, that'll be, some Christians will get to heaven, a guy by the name of Habakkuk will come up and say, hello, hello. What's your name? You say, well, my name is uh, Daniel, or my name is Tommy, or I don't want to pick on anybody. My name is Pietro. My name is Kevin. You know, my name is somebody that say, you know, a guy by the name of uh, Eugene. We don't have any Eugenes in the church. Eugene gets to heaven. He's saved. And uh, Eugene, you know, got saved and his, his coattails were on fire on the way out of here because he didn't do anything for the Lord. He just lived for the world his whole life, but he was saved. And he gets to heaven, and God, by the name of Habakkuk, comes up and says, hello, and my name's Eugene. My name's Habakkuk. What? You know? Oh, you never read my book. No, he never read a book. So a lot of people would say, Habakkuk. Yeah, Habakkuk is a guy in the Bible, and he wrote a book of the Bible. And while I'm talking, I have to find it. So and again, it's right before the book of Zephaniah, Habakkuk. I always joke about uh, that book in particular. I think that's the toughest of all the books to find, really, uh, Habakkuk. And it, it's got a, an interesting, his name is interesting, you know, Habakkuk. I don't know what it means, but he had a prayer. Habakkuk chapter 3, and let's look in verse number 1 and 2. 
a prayer of Habakkuk, the prophet upon Shigayonoth. All right, now here's what he says. Just two verses here. O Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O Lord, revive thy work. And when there's a hymn in the, in the hymnal, it goes, revive thy work, O Lord. Revive thy work, O Lord. And it goes on and it sings about revival. Uh, revive us again is another hymn that we sing. Revive us again. Fill each heart with thy love. May each soul be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. We need revive. And I believe that's this prayer here, Habakkuk prayed, and he prayed not just this this time, but this can be used for future generations that would come. And that's one thing amongst Christians. We always have to, as preachers, always have to remember preacher, people always need preached on sin. It's always part of us, isn't it? And we always do it. I, I imagine I could preach on sin every service and would all get a blessing out of it and say I hit something that we did since the last sermon that was preached. Sin, something a preacher always has to focus on, preaching on, resin, on sin, revival. Okay, it's something that in our Christian life, sometimes we get a little, it becomes mundane. Sometimes we feel like we're wading through concrete and having a difficult time and, and life has thrown us some really difficult curveballs, and we, start backsliding and getting away from God. And this is where preaching comes in. We preach on revival. We want to we want to correct the backslidings. We want to get people right with the Lord. So Habakkuk, it was a prayer of his. O oh Lord, I have heard thy speech and was afraid. O oh Lord, revive thy work. And this is the work of God, the church. O oh Lord, revive thy work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years make known in wrath and I like that. Remember mercy. Oh, thank God for his mercy. <laughs> thank God. In wrath. You know, God can get upset. And when God gets upset, he can do a lot of harm. God can wipe us out if he wanted to. But it's by the mercies of God. Great is thy faithfulness. Thy mercies are renewed every morning. Thank God they're renewed. Okay, so backsliding. You think about revival. Well, backsliding and revival... If we can get rid of the backsliding, we can get people right, for, right with God. And backsliding is in regard to a heifer, a cow, you know, a backsliding heifer. Israel was like that. Jeremiah talks about Israel sliding back like a backsliding heifer, you know, wanted to constantly just backslide. And that's how Christians want to get away from God and get easy and live their life. And, and you know, sometimes living for God can be demanding. And it takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of zeal. And it takes a lot of fire. You've got to have the Holy Spirit, be full of the Holy Ghost in order to do the work of the Lord. Sometimes we want this backslide. Oh, I'm not feeling. Before you know it, you get away from God. And the Lord wants to correct that backsliding. Once you get right. Jeremiah chapter 3. Jeremiah chapter 3. Last week I preached on spiritual growth. I talked about uh, young Christians versus older Christians and where we should be in our Christian life. But I'll tell you this, no matter what age you are in the Lord, you'll still backslide. Everybody backslides, even Pastor Jim. <laughs> no, <laughs> Pastor Jim, he backslid, you know, said, how long? He said, a couple weeks, you know, but Pastor Jim still backslid. You know, he got away from the Lord. He said he really got down for two weeks. I'm like, man, two weeks. And we all laughed about it, didn't we? All laughed because we're like backsliding. Oh, and then we find ourselves bowing our heads saying, oh, God, please help me, you know, because who in here has ever backslid? Come on, be honest. Who in here has ever backslid? Those on Zoom, those listening on the phone, who has ever backslid? Come on. All right, you can see your hand. You've fallen away from the Lord for whatever reasons, you know. And, and, and again, we laughed about Pastor Jim. Now he's in heaven. He can't backslide anymore. Never will backslide. He's, he's up there with the Lord. Once you're dead, you'll never backslide. But once you know, you're, you're living, you backslide. You get away from the Lord. 
And you know, when you get right with God, how good you feel. Why don't you want to always stay right with God? Really, when you think about how good you feel when you're right with God, why do you want to backslide? And if you're backslidden today, you're miserable because you're not right with God and you need to get right with God. That's part of growth. Get away from God and you realize this is how we understand God. And we understand how he works. He comes and gets us and helps us. Sometimes we need a good swat on the, on the backside. And the Lord gives it. He chastens us. You know, and that's why he says, despise not the chastening hand of the Lord. For whom the Lord loveth, he correcteth. You know, he, he, he chasteneth every one, every son that he receiveth. Jeremiah chapter 3. Jeremiah chapter 3. And let's look in verse 6 real quick. It says, the Lord said also unto me in the days of Josiah the king, hast thou seen that which backsliding Israel hath done? Now, what happens when a person backslides? When they backslide, they have a tendency to fall into sin. Okay, so when you're right with the Lord, you have a tendency to live right. You will live right. When you backslide, you live wrong, and you get into wickedness. And this is what happened to her. Backsliding Israel hath done. She has gone up upon every high mountain and upon every green tree, and there hath played the harlot. Okay, so got involved in playing the harlot. Now let's go over and look in verse number 20. Verse number 20. Surely, as a wife treacherously departeth from her husband, so have ye dealt treacherously with me, O house of Israel, saith the Lord. So he compares his relationship to that of a husband and wife. And God the Father is married to Israel. If you didn't know that, it's his wife. Okay? So it says, Surely as a wife treacherously departeth from her husband, so have ye dealt treacherously with me, O house of Israel, saith the Lord. A voice was heard upon the high places, weeping and supplications of the children of Israel. Look, for they have perverted their way, and they have forgotten the Lord their God. And how many times, and Pietro, I know you know these verses because they're part of they're some of your favorite verses. They're found in the early part of Deuteronomy. And I know that he loves those because we talked about that. From Deuteronomy chapter 1 to around Deuteronomy chapter 7, in between there, you want a real blessing, read from 1 to chapter 7. And God reminds them, he reminds them of the great things that he did for them, and he, he cautions them and tells them, beware, don't forsake me. And here we find, and throughout the Bible you see that. And oftentimes we look at Israel and we say, oh, they're falling away again. And the Lord taps us on the shoulder and he says, that's what you do. You're just like Israel. You know, because oftentimes we look and we, and, and we shake our head. How could they fall away again? How could they fall away again? How could they? And then God looks at us and he, said, he shakes his head and he says, how could you fall away again? How could you fall away again? No, we have a tendency to backslide and to forget God. And when we forget God, we end up forsaking God and we get perverted in our ways. And again, this is where God's mercy comes in. You know, you read the story of the prodigal son, and we can all find that in our hearts somewhere, where we're a prodigal, and we run away from God. And God has to come get us, and he waits for us. As the father waited for the prodigal son to come, the father waited for him, and finally the son came, and the father forgave him and welcomed him back and ran upon him and kissed him and hugged him and, and just threw a great supper, supper for him and welcomed him back. It says, they have, they have forgotten the Lord their God. Verse 22, return. This is where you return. You repent, and you get right. You turn from your ways, and you come back. Return, ye backsliding children, and I will heal your backslidings. Behold, we come unto thee, for thou art the Lord our God. Okay, so returning. We return and come back to God. And the Lord welcomes us back. Okay, now, what causes backsliding? What causes it? Sometimes an evil heart of unbelief can enter into us, where we get to questioning things. Sometimes a root of bitterness can come in, and it really causes us to get bitter. You know, and we get the woe is me syndrome. Sometimes affliction. Sometimes things in our life can cause cause hardships and things that we just tend to fall away from God. Sin can creep in. 
and sin can overcome us. And then the bonds of iniquity can become very heavy upon us. Before we know it, you get away from God. And you backslide. Indifference. Unfaithfulness. Not coming to church. Not hearing the preaching. After a while. And this is, this is what I was very concerned about with this pandemic. As a pastor, I was very concerned. I was trying as hard as I could to get people back into church. Listen, if we go without church, there's no way we're not going to backslide. You have to be in church. And that's why I was like, let's get the doors open as quickly as we can to get people back together. Because when you're back together, you're amongst the saints. And there's power with the saints when you're together and coming together. I was very fearful that everybody would just backslide and fall away from God. Now, again, as a pastor, when you got the sheep that are scattered all over the place, you want to get the sheep back and corral them because the pastor wants the sheep to see the the sheep of his flock. And it was difficult during the pandemic. It's something I prayed hard and asked God wouldn't fall away, that we'd be able to retain everybody that we started with and keep everybody from backsliding, getting away from God. So again, these things can cause all of it. All right, now, one of the things that troubles us in the Christian world today is, you would think it would be a blessing to us, but it troubles us. Anybody? You would think it would be a blessing. What? Oh, the phone, yeah. <laughs> the phone, definitely. Some, yeah, it troubles us. But you would think it would be a blessing, but it's not. It troubles the church. And what I'm going to say is the word money. 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 You think when you have money that you would be more appreciative. But it seems that the church in the book of Revelation that was probably the worst of all the churches was the one that was the richest. And in the world today, I believe the Christian world is troubled by riches, by riches. And I believe it fulfills what was written about the church of the Laodiceans. They were a lukewarm church. They couldn't decide, were they going to be totally on fire for God or were they going to be totally just cold? And the Lord said, hey, make up your mind. Either you're going to be hot or you're going to be cold. But we find in the world today a lukewarmness. And God says, it's so lukewarm. And this water has ice in it. So, but and I appreciate this water. Thank you. Again, I don't want to drink lukewarm water while I'm preaching. A nice, as cold waters are to a thirsty soul. But the Lord takes a sip of the churches, and the Lord tries the churches throughout the book of Revelation. He does, those seven churches. He tries each of them. And when he gets to Laodicea, he says, thou art lukewarm. And he takes a drink of it. And when he takes that drink, he wants to spew. He says, I'll spew you. And he throws it back out. And he spews it out of his mouth. He said, you're lukewarm. What made the church lukewarm? And what makes the church lukewarm today? What makes Christians lukewarm? And what makes them have a tendency to be worldly? And carnality is a big thing in the world. Carnal Christians. It's the love of money and it's riches. Let's go to Revelation. Backsliding can be caused. The love of money. Revelation. And let's look there. Revelation chapter 3. Revelation chapter 3. And notice I said the love of money. It's not wrong to have riches, but to love them. And again, if God has given them to you, the Bible says, if riches, in, and I quoted this a lot uh, in 2020, if riches increase, what? If riches increase, set not thy heart upon them. That's a very, very important thing. If riches increase, if God blesses you with, with monetary uh, blessings and prosperity that way, and you're blessed. If they increase, set not your heart upon them. Be careful. Don't trust in uncertain riches. Don't trust in those because, as we said, riches sure take wings and they fly away as an eagle to the heaven. You had it, now it's gone. Uncertain riches. The Lord doesn't want us to trust in those things. And when you start getting your eyes on that, that 
The Bible talks in the book of Matthew, it says they choke the word. Cares of this world, the deceitfulness of riches, entering in, entering in, you see, entering in, choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. Backslide, because you got your eyes on the wrong thing. Remember, if they increase, they have their place. Set not your heart upon them. Trust in God always, always. Revelation chapter, Revelation chapter 3, and look in verse number 14. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, and he says that about every church period. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So basically he's saying there, make up your mind. I wish you would make up your mind. Either be cold or be hot. If you're in, get in. Stay in. Stay hot. Live for God. But you say, Pastor, in the world we live, it's so difficult. As somebody said when I said, uh, I said the things that cause people to backslide, phones. I mean, this is how the world get, creeps in, doesn't it? Sometimes it, it gets so busy and so preoccupied in things with this phone. Some people, that's all they do. Their face is constantly in this phone. Constantly. It's like their whole world. The whole world. Anybody know anybody like that? I'm not going to ask, is anybody like that? You know, but <laughs> you're here sheepishly. Always in your phone. You say, but I'm reading my Bible. Okay, well, everybody's got an excuse. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I get it. Uh, the world is your phone. But things, the world, it has many avenues. And that's the problem in the world today. We're just so connected to the world, and it's so easy to get involved in the world. You find yourself how easy it is to get involved in politics, how easy it is to get involved in news and the media. I mean, when you think about it, you become a news reporter yourself with your phone. How many people news instantly, instantly, instantly? Got to have it, got to have it, got to have it, got to have it. It's not fast enough for me. Fast food's not fast enough. Got to be... Now, 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 I have to. And before we know it, we're so connected. It's easy to fall away from God. It's easy because we're connected to the world. Okay, now it goes on, it's verse 16. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee. It's not a good thing. I'll spew thee. You know, when somebody spews it out of their mouth, blah, Take, you expect cold or hot. Oh, spew it. I'll spew thee out of my mouth. Not good. Why? Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. You see, you trust in uncertain riches instead of in the living God and have need of nothing and knowest not that thou art wretched, look at the words, wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich. You know, you think about the precious metals, gold and silver. God likens his word to silver, tried in a furnace. This has good riches right here. He says, I counsel thee to buy me gold, tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. That's what he says to the church. Now, if the world, if the church in the world today is like this, what's the need of the church to do? What should the church be doing? Repenting. And I believe when people repent and get right with God, revival comes. Revival comes. When you're stiff-necked and adamant and hard and you will not get right with God, you cannot get revived. You've got to take out what's in the middle 
and come face to face with God and say, I'm sorry. Lord, I put other things before you. I'm sorry. In 2021, I want to get right with God and I want to be revived. Wasn't that a backup's prayer? Shouldn't that be our prayer? To get right with God? Amen. Now again, if the church is full of riches today, and riches to be a problem, the Bible says in the book of Timothy, this is what Paul said to Timothy. He said to be aware of this here. Okay, let's go to Timothy. First, first Timothy chapter 6. First Timothy chapter 6. <clears throat> I tell you, in the end, everything we have is going to do what? It's going to burn. It's going to burn. You say, not mine. Yes, yours. And everybody and everything, the world and everything that's in it is going to be burned up one day. God is going to take everything off of this planet soul-wise, every soul and every dead body. God's going to call every single soul and every body off of this planet. He's going to empty the whole planet, great white throne. And I saw the dead, small and great. Everybody's there. And it's not on earth. Stand before God. At that time, God sends fire and he redoes the earth. Completely new. That means that this church building and these precious chairs that you sit on. And thank God for these chairs. They're a blessing, aren't they? Somebody... Somebody in the church or somebody, I don't know, I don't know who. It could have been an outsider. I don't know who it was. But somebody surprised us one day with chairs. Remember the old chairs and how uncomfortable those things were? These are really nice and they're really comfortable. But as much as we love these chairs and we appreciate the chair, it's going to burn up. It's going to burn up. Everything, our houses, our cars, everything, going to burn. We need to understand that. The only thing that's going to remain is what we've done for Christ. What we've done for Christ. So I say in 2021, let's get busy for God and do more. And do more. Okay, 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 6. I want to ask this morning, are you content? A lot of people aren't happy because they're not content. That's a problem. And I tell you, it's a problem in America. You would think we'd be content. We always want more. I can't get enough, have to have more. Godliness, verse six, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Are you happy with what you have? I didn't get many amens. Are you happy with what you have? Husbands, are you happy with your wives? Wives, are you happy with your husbands? Kids, are you happy with your parents? You better be because they're your parents. <laughs> Are you happy with the home God's given you? Are you happy with your lot in life? Amen. Need I get my amen sign out? If you're happy. Yeah, as the one preacher did say. If your heart is happy, let your face show it. And let your face know it. So your face can show it. Happiness. Godliness first. Godliness. That's the key. Godliness with contentment is great gain. I could preach on that all day. Okay. Look at this. For we brought nothing into this world. And it is certain we can carry nothing out. And that would go with the saying, there are no U-Hauls at funerals. No U-Hauls at funerals. You come in with nothing, you're going out with nothing. They might dress you up nice in the casket and say, oh, look at that nice suit. It's a dead body. It's going out with nothing. It's going to rot. It's going to decay. You came in with nothing, you're going to go out with nothing. All right. He said, well, that's a little bit morbid, Pastor. All this that I have on earth, I got to leave. Yes, you got to leave. That's why the Lord says, lay up treasure in heaven. Because now that's waiting for you. Imagine. You leave all this, and somebody, a Christian, accrues all this on earth, and they all never do anything for God, and they got all this down here, and the Lord says, you're coming home. Boom, they die. They go up to nothing. They left it all. But some Christian down here lives for God, 
and doesn't put their eyes here on earth and doesn't have everything in the world down here. Maybe they can't get that, whatever they suffered for Christ. And the Lord takes them home and the Lord says, you're leaving that. And boom, you got everything. Let's not get it backwards. Let's get everything up there instead of down here. The Lord says, lay up treasure in heaven. Okay? In uh, verse number eight, and having food and raiment, let us, let us therewith be content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation, in a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil. It didn't say money was. It says the love of money. And I'll tell you this, the King James gets it right. The other Bibles say, for the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. It's not all kinds. It says the love of money is the root of all evil. That's what God says. Which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and have pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, Flee these things and follow after righteousness, godliness, Amen. faith, love, patience, meekness. Are not some of those the fruits of the Spirit? Okay, verse 12. Fight. Fight. The good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. I give thee charge in the sight of God who quickeneth all things and before Christ Jesus, who before Pontius Pilate witnessed a good confession. Now go down to verse number 17. Charge them that are rich in this world that they be not high-minded nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy. And praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He gives us the strength to enjoy all things. He gives us the health to enjoy all things. And as Americans, aren't we blessed? We are really blessed. How many good things in life we've been able to enjoy? How many good meals we've been able to sit down with? Think about how the world lives. Are not we a very, 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 very blessed people? And as America, we spit in God's face. God has blessed this country so much and people spit in his face. They live the way they want to do. They act the way they want to. They sin the way they want to without any accountability. Listen, God's still on that throne. Amen. And the eyes of the Lord see it all. The eyes of the Lord are in every place beholding the evil and the good. God knows. And God has blessed this country. And this country is turning around and they're spitting in God's face. It's time for this country, not just Christians, it's time for this country to get right with God. It's time for this country, our politicians and everybody to turn the ship back towards God and right the ship away from wickedness and back to the godly things, back to the word of God, back to the roots that establish this country as a godly Christian nation. And people can say all they want in America uh, wasn't established as a Christian nation. It absolutely was, absolutely. It was founded on this book. And America would do well to come back to this book. Charge them that are rich in this world, that they be not high-minded, nor trust in uncertain riches, but in the living God who giveth us richly all things to enjoy, that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life. So the Lord says, hey, if you do have it, and the Lord has given you riches, what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to be willing and ready to distribute. When you see a need, meet that need. You see a need. And how many times people see a need and they turn a blind eye to it? Never help. Never help. If God has given it to you and blessed you with it, there are others that are not so blessed as we are. And we need to be ready to distribute, willing to communicate. Okay, now, I just mentioned that because the Lord says in the book of Revelation about the church of Laodicea that thou art rich. 
but they knew not that they were wretched, miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked. Okay, now as last week I said this, I said the, the crux of the message last week was grow up. Grow up, because I talked about spiritual growth. And if you're young in the Lord, you grow in the Lord, and we don't want to be babies in, in Christ, we want to grow up. This message is, and in two words, wake up. Last week was grow up. This week was wake up. Wake up. And that's a very scriptural term there, wake up. God says that, wake up. He says it so many times. In fact, get Ephesians. We're going to get four passages real quick. Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 5 and 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We'll get those two first. Ephesians chapter 5 and 1 Corinthians 15. Ephesians chapter 5. And let's look in verse number 8. Ephesians 5 and verse 8. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. And that's another reason why people backslide too, is they get around the wrong company. As the one preacher so amply put it, when you run with the dogs, you're going to get fleas. When you run with the dogs, you'll get fleas. Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. So the Lord says basically, wake up. Stop sleeping. A lot of Christians are spiritually sound asleep. And the Lord wants them to wake up. Didn't he charge the disciples when they fell asleep? He said, wake up. Wake up. That's what he says to Christians nowadays. Christians are spiritually sound asleep. And the Lord has to, wake up. Awake. And this is our next verse. 1 Corinthians 15. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 34. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 34. Awake to righteousness. And sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 34, if you're just getting there. Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. How many people were out there dying and going to hell, and they have not the knowledge of God because we won't tell them? He speaks it to their shame, and he's charging the Corinthian church. He said, how many people have not the knowledge of God? I speak this to your shame. Shame on you for not telling them. He says, wake up. He does this two other times in the scriptures, Romans and 1 Thessalonians. Let's go to Romans 13. These will be my two final verses. Romans chapter 13 and 1 Thessalonians 5. I'm trying to get you fired up, folks. Amen. Amen. Trying to revive you. All right, let's go to Romans 13 and 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Okay, Romans chapter 13, and look in verse number 11. And that knowing the time. Now, what time are we? This is our first service of the new year. So I think it's ample to preach. It's good to preach on revival. The time is early 2021. We got the whole year ahead of us. Let's get revived and charge into the new year for God. Okay? It says, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time to do what? To awake. Get up. Everybody, wake up. Let's go. 2021 is ahead of us. What are we going to do for God? It's high time to wake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer. Than when we believed. Amen. Praise God. The coming of the Lord coming. It's coming. And he said, well, it could be a ways off. But I'll tell you this. I'm one service closer. Right. Amen. 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 I am one service closer. Amen. I am one day closer. 
I am, as we head through the new year, every day is just one step closer to the coming of the Lord. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Okay, now let's go to 1 Thessalonians 5, and this will be the last passage. And on the New Year's, uh, New Year's, well, Wednesday, when I preached, that would have been um, two days before the New Year. Wednesday, that would have been the last service of 2020. I preached on the little verses, the little verses. Let's take a look at those little verses and live the little verses for 2021. Now, I'm not going to go through them again here. I'm going to go to instead verse number one, okay? But for those of you who are wondering what's the theme for the new year, live the little verses. That's the theme for the new year, and they're found from verse 16 through the end of the chapter. But 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 1, but of the times and of the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness. And these past couple verses have been speaking about darkness and light. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But look at the contrary here, verse 8. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. Let's live for God in 2021 and get revived and get excited for God. There's much to do. and God wants to use us to do it. We just have to have the willing heart to say, Lord, here am I. Send me. Here am I. Send me, Lord. Okay. Let's be dismissed with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this message. I pray that you'd be with your saints as we head into 2021. I pray that, we'd, Lord, uh, keep our priorities right, that you'd help us, Lord, to live for you first before anything else. Whether you prosper us, whatever you do, Lord, help us to always look to Jesus and have our eyes on the finish line, Lord. I pray that you'd strengthen us, encourage us, and help those, Lord, that... Um, that really need help today, please just be with them and encourage them. Thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for saving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.